morning. Hope you guys are well. Happy Easter. Happy Dingus Day, you dingle. Love you guys. Hope you had an awesome spring break. Welcome back. Hope you guys are well rested and ready to rumble. Go ahead and hit pause and try to figure out the part of speech and definition of prattle. All right, we got the word prattle, prattled, and prattles, which tells us this must be a verb because verbs are the only part of speech that change based on tense. Now, let's read that first sentence. After Ted awoke from his coma, he began to blank about the accident. He began to, what would you do? You woke up from a coma, you had an accident, you would begin to talk about it, right? To explain what happened. Uh, so to prattle means to talk, but let's look at that last sentence. My mother prattles so endlessly that I can barely understand what she's talking about. So that tells us a little bit more. Not only does prattle mean to talk, but it also means to talk a lot, like to talk just almost like babbling. Like it doesn't even make sense because there's so much of it. Like look at those rattlesnakes up at the top. That one rattlesnake just prattles on and on and on. He keeps babbling. He keeps talking. Now, let's look at the word prattling really quick. What part of speech is a rattlesnake? A rattlesnake is an animal, so that makes it a noun, right? It's a, it's a thing. So, But what kind of rattlesnake is it? It's a prattling rattlesnake, which tells us that prattling isn't always a verb. It could also be an adjective, because here it's describing what kind of a rattlesnake it is. It's a rattlesnake that just won't stop talking. So the rattlesnake might be prattling on and on and on, but it could also be a prattling rattlesnake, a rattlesnake that just won't stop talking. So that's one of the weird things about the English language. Verbs can sometimes change and also be adjectives. It's a very flexible language. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to pause the video. I want you to stop and I want you to go check your power school. I plugged in an updated power school with all of your grades. So you will see very in your face, uh, like, a, like I think it's like an orange dot if you have a missing assignment. So I plugged in zeros and flagged missing assignments as missing. So go ahead and double check. Make sure you've turned all those things in. Maybe you forgot to turn something in. Um, if you don't know how to get on PowerSchool, you should email your homeroom teacher and double check. But I want you to actually stop and go and check your power school. Uh, try to turn those things in as quickly as you can so I can up to update those grades for you. All right. What we're going to do is we're going to start our poetry unit. All right. When I think about poetry, uh, I love poetry. So anywho, during this poetry unit, what we're going to do, you're going to identify the different forms of poetry. You're going to see a poem, and you're going to be able to say, oh, that's a free verse poem, or a haiku, or an acrostic. So you're going to be able to identify the different types of poems. You're going to create your own original poems, and we're going to analyze and argue about poems. We're going to argue, hey, here's how that poet got their message across. So we're going to do some analysis as well. And what does that spell? Ica! That's a joke. Anywho, uh, poems, they come in all different shapes, all different sizes, all right? Some of them rhyme. Uh, some of them have very specific rules, like how many syllables they have to have per line, and how many lines they can have. And other poems have absolutely no, no rules at all, all right? But for me, whenever I think about poetry, I think about one thing and one thing only, and that is rap. Do you know what rap stands for? Rap stands for rhythm and poetry. Hey Milo, can I get a beat? Boom, ba da ba ba da ba 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 da ba ba da. Say one, two, three, yeah, poetry. We talking silence ballads, epics and elegies. We talking free verse, blank verse, haiku. Onomatopoeia got me sneezing, I chew. Some poems you see, they just got to rhyme. And some are just free, man, it ain't no crime. Limericks and sonnets, yeah, they out here scheming. Precision in their meter and their rhyme is beaming. Meter is the rhythm, it sounds like a beat. Your poem makes a picture, yeah, that's called concrete. 575, man, that's a haiku. If you're worshiping an object, that's an ode, my dude. Ballads and epics tell stories in verse. Elegies honor heroes carried off in a hearse. A cross expel words like a crossword puzzle. Oh, you don't dig poems? Well, here's my rebuttal. Poets spit fire like a dragon disrupted. Emotions overflowing like volcanoes erupted. If you want that gold, man, you better get digging in the poems. Not your nose, because you know you've been picking. 
Try to beat my rhymes, man, you better just quit. Cause the poems I be spitting, man, they all end up just lit. All right, my friends, in that poem that I just performed for you were all the different types of poems that you will be able to identify by the end of this unit. So what we're going to do really quick, we're going to take some notes. Now, I recommend that you record all your notes in your notebook or on a separate sheet of paper. I'm going to have you make flashcards out of these terms. We're going to take some vocab down. Um, so if you want and you have some note cards, you could just make flashcards. Right? Instead of writing them on a piece of paper, you can just write them on flashcards. But no matter what, don't lose your notes. Right, You want to take good notes. So write them on a sheet of paper that you have. Term number one is a stanza. I'm going to hit pause. go ahead and hit pause and copy down the definition. I will race you, furiously writes. So a stanza is a group of lines in a poem. Another way to think about it is it's kind of like a paragraph, but in a poem. All right. So a stanza is a poem paragraph. That's kind of the quick, easy definition. So let me give you an example. How many paragraphs, how many stanzas is the poetic form rap that I just performed? Well, as you can see, it's just one stanza. Now, if I went in here and I decided to go like that, well, now I would have one and two stanzas. Okay, so again, a stanza is just a grouping of lines, kind of like in a essay or in a book, we use paragraphs. Well, a poem uses something called a stanza. All right, so there we go. Actually, it's two now. So anywho, so the first type of poem that we're going to talk about, drum roll please, is a haiku. So this is term number two in your uh, notes. A haiku is a very short poem. It's only three lines and it is five syllables for line one, then seven syllables, and then five syllables. So go ahead and hit pause and copy down that definition. <laughs> Haikus usually include images from nature. Almost always they are uh, poems that talk about how different images come together, how they interact, how they're juxtaposed next to each other. And this is a very traditional Japanese uh, poetic form. Okay, so haiku is actually a Japanese word. And again, uh, a haiku is a poem and it's only three lines. It's five syllables, then seven syllables, then five. I have an example for you. I'm going to read it with you. An old silent pond. A frog jumps into the pond. Splash. Silence again. So again, this is by Matsuo Basho. He's a Japanese author. And you can tell that this is a haiku because it's only three lines. And let's go ahead and count the stanzas. Or the uh, syllables, sorry. An old silent pond. Five syllables. A frog jumps into the pond. Splash. Silence again. So we have five syllables, seven syllables, five. So, a haiku is a three-line poem, 575, 575, haiku, three lines, 575. Now, how many stanzas is this one poem? Think about it. A stanza is a poem paragraph. How many, po how many paragraphs is it? That's another way to think about it. It's just one, right? So this is just one stanza. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to you about your portfolio. Every single class that we have, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you are going to be composing at least one poem, okay? You're going to turn those poems in on Friday. So today's Monday, you're going to write one, write one on Wednesday, and write one on Friday. So this week, you're going to write three poems, and you'll turn it in at the end of the day on Friday, or whenever you're done on Friday. You can turn it in on Saturday as well, but try to turn them in on Friday, okay? You can handwrite them. That's totally fine, and then you would turn in a picture or a scan, or you can complete them on a Google Doc and turn them in, all right? And I'm going to show you uh, the Google Doc that I have for you, uh, already made for you. So if you want to do it on Google Docs, go ahead and do it that way. I think it's easier to do it that way, but that is totally fine, uh, whatever you want to do, all right? If you do handwrite them, don't lose them because you're getting a grade for each poem you do, all right? So each day, 
you're going to have a prompt, okay? Something that I want you to think about before you write, okay? What I want you to think about is where is your happy place? Where is that place that you feel so happy, no worries, just so content? Another way to think about it, like what's your favorite place in the world, okay? I want you to take a few moments and really think about that. I'm going to encourage you to close your eyes once you think about that place. And I want you to look around. Like, go to that place. Right now, I'm at my lake, my lake house. My family has a, a, a lake house. This is where my grandparents used to live. It's my grandma my grandpa's house. And right now, I'm in the dining room. This is where we had all of our Thanksgiving and our Easter dinners. So close your eyes. Go to that place where you feel so content. I want you to look around the room. Or if you're outside, look around. Okay? What do you see? Okay? What, what, what are the images that come to mind? All right. I was thinking of our big table because I miss my grandparents. Yesterday was Easter. And my grandparents passed away a couple of years ago. So I couldn't spend Easter with them, but I was praying for them. But I always loved having our big Easter dinners there. So right now I'm seeing a giant turkey right now and the gravy and the mashed potatoes and my grandpa's sitting at the head of the table, okay? What do you see? Okay, so again, each day I'm going to have a little prompt, okay, and a couple of questions. And I want you to think about those questions, okay? And in fact, I'm going to have you actually write your response to those questions. And I'm going to show you where that is in a moment. But first, I want to tell you your assignment, okay? You're going to compose a haiku story, or in other words, a story that is told in several haikus. So it could be five, six haikus, okay? And that story should be about you being in that place, that place where you're perfectly content, okay? Now, here's I'm going to show you. It's going to make more sense if you look at the assignment, okay? So the assignment is called Week 1 Poems, Haiku, Free Verse, Concrete, and Acrostic, okay? So this one document has the assignment for Monday and Wednesday and Friday. So if you scroll through, you can see what we're going to do, what your prompt will be for Friday and Wednesday, okay? But I encourage you not to worry about that yet, okay? So again, right here, here's the prompt. Where is that place that you feel perfectly content? happy with no worries and what I want you to do I want you to jot down your thoughts so I'm gonna say my lake house in the dining room um, you know what are some of the things that I see I see some turkey I see mashed gravy I love homemade mashed gravy okay um, maybe also at my lake house I love going on the paddle board so again, I mean, this this space where you're doing this, like it's almost like pre-work, right? This doesn't need to be perfect, okay? Just jot down your thoughts. Um, you know, on the paddle board, Milo is on the board with me, okay? Um, I can see the raft. Uh, the raft is bobbing up and down, okay? So I want you to spend a little bit of time, and I want you to... Jot down a few notes about your favorite place. Now, the thing is, my friends, the more that you jot down here about your favorite place, the better your poem is going to be. Okay? So down here, what you're going to do is you're going to write your actual haiku story. Okay? So your haiku story is going to be a story made out of several different haikus. So you'll have several haikus. And it's going to tell a story. And they should be five syllable, seven syllable, five, right? Just like a normal haiku. Now, let me give you an example, right? I actually already started working on a haiku story. And it's over here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it down here, okay? I'm going to paste it. So here is my haiku story that I just started, okay? This is about my lake. Turquoise water claps the underside of the paddleboard. Light dances onward. Land ho, Milo yells, my trusty first mate, leaning out like a bowsprit. 
So my story is going to be about a time where Milo and I were on our paddleboard at the lake house and Milo actually fell in. Okay, so I'm going to tell a story. I'm going to try to include as many images as I can. All right, and again, it's going to be several stanzas long because a haiku is a very short poem, and I'm going to tell a whole short story out of these haikus. Okay, um, let me think. One other thing I want to point out to you right now, this one stanza right here, it's not a perfect haiku. If you read this line, the underside of the paddle board. Well, that's nine syllables. It should be five, seven, five, right? And that's okay. So what I'm going to do, I think the word underside isn't perfect. But right now, I'm just going to jot down my thoughts and I'll go back and I'll edit them. Okay, like get your thoughts down on paper and then go back and make sure it is actually a haiku. All right. And to be honest with you guys, if one of your lines has six syllables and it should have five, that's okay. All right. Try to do five, seven, five, because that's what a true haiku is. Okay. Now, when you're done with your haiku story, don't hit turn in. Okay. Because your Wednesday poem is going to go down here. And then I also have what your Friday poem will be down here as well. If you hit turn in, it's not going to let you edit the assignment anymore. Okay. And I'll actually show you that right now. So I hit the turn in button and it pops to over to here. Okay. So I turned it in and it should make it so I can't edit it anymore until I unsubmit it, I believe. All right. So anywho, don't hit turn in until Friday. All right, you guys. Please email me or message me on Google Classroom or Remind if you have any questions. I love you guys. I can't wait to read your haikus and read about your favorite places. Love you.